Ex-skeptics describe the experiences that made them believe in ghosts. Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. I'm still not sure if I believe, but there have been some weird things in my life that I can't explain. When I was 5 years old, I woke up in the night and my grandma was standing at the end of my bed wearing a teal blue skirt and a matching blouse. I remember that it was summer and the sky was still light but not light enough for me to read, so I guess it was about 9 pm. I sat up as she put her finger to her lips. I rubbed my eyes a couple of times, and when I looked back, she had gone. I just snuggled back under my covers thinking how nice it was to see her because I hadn't seen her for ages and I hoped she would still be there when I woke up. The next morning, my house was eerily quiet. My mom was in a worse mood than normal, but she had been crying, so I asked her what was wrong. My grandma passed the night before. She had been crossing a road after bingo at 8.30 pm, about 60 miles away from where we lived. She had a massive brain hemorrhage in the middle of the road and didn't even make it to the other side let alone to my house 60 miles away. She was wearing a teal blue skirt and matching blouse. Up until my mid-twenties, I would have told you there's no such thing as ghosts. Now, I just don't know. When I was I was newly married, my spouse and I moved for his job. We needed to find a place to live pretty quickly and mucked into the perfect house. It was old and had been someone's beach cottage. It was on the back half of someone's property, with one road in and out and lots of trees and shade. It was very quiet, and there were no other people around. Because the house was originally a weekend cottage, it was one big room with a small addition to one side that contained a kitchen and bath, and another addition off the back that had a bedroom. The thing that kinda of pinged my radar was the landlord. He was overly insistent that we sign a year lease, and we couldn't break it for any reason. It didn't really register at the time, other than I was a bit worried that maybe there were troublemakers or noisy parties on the beach or something. He assured us that it was a very quiet neighborhood, but he repeated again that we couldn't break the lease. I worked a 9-to-5 job. My spouse worked 12-hour on and off shifts. So there were lots of times when I would be home by myself. The first month or two were fine. I'm mostly a homebody, so when the spouse was at work, I would stay at home. Sometime around the third month, I started to get very strong feelings that someone would be standing behind me while I was reading. It only happened when I was alone in the house, and only when I was in the main room. Without thinking about it too much, I started sitting places where my back was to the wall, or reading in the bedroom. When I went to bed at night, I started closing the door between the bedroom and the rest of the house. I felt safe in the bedroom. Sometimes, when I fell asleep in front of the TV late at night, I'd wake up to catch someone standing in front of the fireplace, just out of the corner of my eye. I thought I needed to stop dreaming so much. But I started to stay in the bedroom after dark, with the door shut. Then things started not being where I put them in the big room. I wasted 5 to 10 minutes almost every day looking for my handbag or my car keys. One day when I came home after work, I found my knitting yarn wrapped and tangled around all the furniture in the big room. I don't mean just a little bit, I mean the yarn was strung between couches and wrapped around the legs of the chairs. I told myself that my spouse was playing a trick on me, and I cleaned it up. Then I decided that I wouldn't mention it to him, just to see how long it took him to come clean. He never did. I moved my knitting to the bedroom. My sister came to visit for a long weekend. She slept on the pull-out sofa in the big room. After the first night, she told us that the sofa wasn't very comfortable and she thought she was coming down with something, so she changed her travel arrangements. She left that afternoon, she seemed agitated, but she wouldn't talk about it. A few days after she went home, she called and said, I know you don't believe in ghosts and maybe I'm just being stupid. My heart dropped, I thought I was the only one. She went on to tell me that after she went to sleep that night in the big room, noises woke her up. She thought it was one of us, but no one was there. Then the windows started opening and closing around the room. One window opened and closed, then the one next to that. Then she heard footsteps walking towards her, but no one was there. The footsteps walked right up to the bed where she was sitting, then over it, continued across the room, and out through the side door into the kitchen area. She said she ran out the front door and spent the rest of the night on the front porch. She came back inside when the sun came up, waited for us to wake up, and made excuses to go home. 
She didn't want to spend another night in that house. A few weeks after that, just when I'd stopped jumping at every stray noise, I woke up one Sunday morning and went to cook a leisurely breakfast. And y'all, I still don't know how to explain this, when I opened the kitchen cabinets to get the dishes out, all the dishes were rearranged. Not messy, not tumbled about. They were all very neat and orderly, but everything was on the wrong shelf. The shelf that normally held glasses now had plates stacked on them. The shelves that normally held bowls now had glasses on them. My first thought was that someone had been in the house during the night. I checked all the locks, still locked. I pretended it never happened. I pretended that I always kept the glasses on that shelf, and there was nothing strange about having all the plates on this shelf. I cooked breakfast, I went on with my day. Later that afternoon, I told my spouse that I wasn't really comfortable in this house anymore. Could we find somewhere else to live? Amazingly enough, my spouse never asked me why. He simply said that was probably a good idea and let's find something quickly. We moved out and called the landlord after we'd already packed and moved the furniture. He came over and picked up the keys. He never, not once, asked why we were moving. In fact, he never met our eyes. We agreed to keep paying rent until he could get some new tenants. Months later, I asked my spouse if he ever felt anything strange in that house. He said, yeah, that wasn't a good house. Glad we moved. I was 100% skeptical and didn't believe in anything paranormal, and then my kid, who was six at the time, turned my beliefs on their head. We were living in a two-bedroom apartment, and she just couldn't sleep well at night. I didn't think much of it at the time, downplaying it as normal insomnia, which I had struggled with when I was a kid. The thing that struck me as weird about it was that she never deviated from her original reason of why she couldn't get to sleep. She would come out of her room to tell me that there was an old man telling her to leave because he lived there. I had the typical eye roll reaction like, well, you don't have to be asleep, but you need to stay in bed when it's bedtime. I didn't believe her, that was a mistake. After several months of living there and doing this routine regularly, I got a photo debit card in the mail from a bank I don't do business with addressed to a different name. My first reaction was to think this was identity theft or a previous tenant didn't notify their bank that they moved out. I called the bank and read the numbers off the card. While I wrapping up the call, I had put it down on the table to find the scissors, as the banker had told me to cut up the card. When my kid heard the conversation, she came over to see the card on the table, and said to me, that's the old man in my room, that's him. I'm thinking to myself, yeah, the picture shows an elderly white man with white hair and a white beard, but that's got to be a coincidence right? Right. So, fine, I'm going to prove that. I look up the name in quotes, along with the name of my town. My first search result is this man's obituary. Still not wanting to believe what my six-year-old was telling me, I got in touch with his surviving family members via Facebook. I found out that this gentleman passed in the apartment after succumbing to cancer. He was waiting to move in with his son and convalesce there, but passed away before the move happened. I should note that I never saw him or heard him. I only knew about this because of my kid. I asked her about all the things that he had said to her. I pay rent on time every month, and this is my place, not yours, were the most frequent complaints. I worked with a psychic medium to help us deal with this problem, that's another story, and ended up moving out as soon as my lease was up. Most of my family are extremely religious and believe in ghosts wholeheartedly. I wasn't very religious, and I always thought to myself, if I haven't seen it, then it's not real. That changed during my senior year. I was dog-sitting at my great aunt's house while she was out of town for a few days. A little after midnight, I was watching a movie, and my aunt's dog starts barking like crazy and runs up the stairs at full speed. The dog was small, but fierce. Suddenly, I clear as day heard a gravelly voice at the top of the stairs say, bad doggy. The voice was deep and masculine. I went upstairs because I was certain nobody else was supposed to be there. I looked around, and there was nobody in sight. The dog was still barking at something that I couldn't see, she was just barking at an empty hallway. That's when I heard footsteps walking away from us down the hall and into my aunt's bedroom. I could hear the footsteps, but I couldn't see anybody making them. I noped out of that house with the dog and went outside in my car. The dog and I slept there for the night. I'm not entirely sure what I experienced that night, but I definitely believe in the paranormal now. 
I never told my aunt about what happened, but apparently my great uncle, her husband, had died in that house a few months after I was born. I never knew him, but I'm willing to bet that it was him who I heard that night. I still don't believe in ghosts, but I did have a strange experience. I had a cat who I found in a ditch many years ago. I pet her, and she followed me back about a mile to my home. I opened the door for her and she came in, she was mine forever. I've had many pets over the years and loved them all, but this one was different. She wanted to be near me all the time. She followed me up to bed every night and purred me to sleep. She passed fairly quickly, I barely even had a chance to say goodbye. I knew she was ill, having been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, which cat owners will know is not a good thing. It was the most painful one I've ever had to deal with. I put her down and she even meowed one last time before the end. I buried her in the yard to keep her close and tried to go to sleep, completely beside myself with grief. As I lay down, I heard something familiar. I live in an old house, and my bedroom doesn't have a door so I installed one of those plastic sliding doors. The slats it's made of make a telltale clacking sound when they're disturbed, like they did when a cat pushes in between them and the doorframe. A moment later, I felt the foot of my bed compress, and could feel the mattress deform around my feet, up beside my legs, and roughly to my hips. I looked, no cat. I don't know how to explain this. I don't believe in ghosts, and I'm sure grief can cause some pretty significant psychological disturbances, but to feel my mattress deform like that in exactly the way she used to circle my feet and come up beside me. I don't know what to think. In high school, I worked kids' birthday parties. The place was basically a giant gym, and gymnastics and dance classes were also held there. One day, I came in, and one of the girls I worked with who was very spiritual and religious was totally freaked out. During a gymnastics class she taught that morning, one of the kids was staring up at the ceiling. When she asked the kid what he was doing, he said, there's a little boy up there, and pointed at the ceiling. Strange enough, but whatever, kids are weird. Later, two girls who were working a birthday party before mine came out of the gym visibly shaken. A pair of five-year-old twins went down a slide and then stared at the ceiling. They both said that there was a little boy up there, in the same spot on the ceiling. We all went in and inspected the ceiling. Of course, it was just a regular, gray ceiling, but we were all super freaked out. During my party, I was pushing a little boy on the giant swing we had in the gym. He too, began to stare at the ceiling. He said directly to my face, hey, there's a little boy up there. We told all of our coworkers and managers about the three separate experiences we had with children from different parties and classes seeing a little boy on the ceiling. The next day, we had downtime between parties, and nobody was in the gym. There are cameras in the gym that allow parents to see their children playing from the lobby. My manager called us out of the break room, and said, guys, check this out. We come out and see the screen, which is streaming from the gym, showing that giant swing going back and forth. Nobody's in there, it's just the swing going. I'd like to think that the ghost was truly a little boy who just wanted to play, and he finally got to go on the swing. This instance converted me to a believer. Once, I was on an exercise with the army, I was patrolling along a trail with my section. We were told that we were moving into enemy, a bunch of officer cadets, territory and could be attacked at any time. So we're patrolling along, and I heard a whisper in my ear that sounded like my step-grandmother, say, look left. I did. The enemy was no more than 20 miles away. A firefight ensues, and we, the lowly uneducated grunts at these wannabe officers up. After another week, we finished the training up and headed home. My parents picked me up and informed me my step-grandmother had passed the night before I heard her whisper in my ear. My girlfriend's grandfather's ashes were on a little shelf in the living room, right next to a very solid, heavy angel statue. One weekend, she and I were fooling around on the living room couch. And out of the corner of my eye, I see the angel statue fly off the wall, accompanied with a deep run. Now, when I say this thing flew off the wall, I'm talking 7 to 8 feet of air before landing on the hardwood and leaving a dent where the wing hit. Even if this thing had fallen off the wall, it would have dropped straight down, not soared with force. Well, we both stood there in shock, and I whispered if she had heard the grunt as well, to which she agreed, so we both booked it for the day. 
That night at dinner, we told her parents what happened, leaving out the naughty bit, and my girlfriend's younger sister burst into tears saying she had seen a dark figure at the foot of her bed the last couple or nights, but didn't want anyone to think she was crazy. The grandfather who died had mental health issues that caused a lot of pain. Well, after that day, I was a believer. I'm speaking for my wife. I grew up in a house that was haunted, so I know what's out there, but my wife has always been a skeptic and gave me sheet for believing in the paranormal and being spiritual until we moved into our house. She has seen and still sees a couple dressed in white in our backyard staring at our house. At night, she will hear a giggle and doors close. She tried to rationalize what she'd seen until one day, she saw a lady floating over our bed. That did it, and now she takes what I say seriously. I grew up in a very scientific family. I never knew my dad's stance on ghosts, but they were never talked about, so it really didn't matter. One day when I was in high school, we were eating dinner, and I decided to ask my dad about our old house and moving into it when I was just a baby. So, he told me a story. Apparently when we moved into this house, we lived there about a week before we started to receive gifts once a week. Every Friday morning, my dad told me that there would be some sort of handcrafted gift sitting on the mantle of our fireplace. My dad was reasonably freaked out by this, because we were the only ones with keys to the house, and the last owner moved well out of state. So he informed the local police, and they decided to patrol the property every Friday night looking for intruders. They found nothing, and as you could imagine, the gifts kept coming. My dad told me they eventually gave up. Feeling helpless, he went to our local church. Eventually, he had a priest come and bless the house, and we stopped receiving the gifts. What really freaked me out about this was the fact that my dad never believed in ghosts, and didn't mention once that a ghost was causing these gifts to appear. He's an engineer so he always tries to debunk people's paranormal stories with a realistic explanation, but he was 100% serious with this story. One of the gifts we received we actually still have, it's a wooden sled with a small painting of a man, presumably my dad, pulling me and my sister on the sled. We received this gift about 8 months to a year before my mother passed away from cancer, so that made the painting on the sled very freaky in hindsight. My dad only told me this story once, and he denied he ever told me it when I asked him about it recently. I slept over at my buddy's house and woke up at 3 am to the sound of a woman's crying coming from right outside of his bedroom. I figured it was his mom arguing with another family member. At first, I felt very awkward rather than scared. Then things began getting more intense. She started screaming, $7? You did this for $7? She began getting louder and louder, and I thought I might need to intervene before someone got hurt. I stood up, walked to the door, grabbed the handle, and opened the door. There was, silence. Every light in his house was off, there was no one else awake, nothing. I still can't explain what happened. I woke my friend up, and he told me he once saw a lady in a white gown walking up his steps and thought it was his mom, but when she didn't respond to him calling out to her, he followed her up the stairs. When she turned a corner, she disappeared. Another day, when they were moving out of the house, his cousin and sister told everyone that they swore they saw a girl in a white gown standing at the upstairs window as they pulled out of the driveway. My friend and I never told anyone about our stories, so his cousin and sister said they saw what they saw without any prior knowledge of the situation. I was always on the fence about ghosts, because there was no scientific evidence of them being real. And I was going through a big question phase with religion and afterlife at the time anyway. But my family moved into an old farmhouse when I was 12. This was a very old farmhouse with a build date around the Civil War. The original owner's name was still on the old barn out back, and we found numerous old antiques built into the walls when we completely renovated the place. A few odds and ends things happened after we first moved in, but distinct things started happening to me after I turned 16, but never to my sister until after she turned 16 too. The most prominent memory I have. The upstairs consisted of two bedrooms. One bedroom was the room at the top of the stairs, and the second bedroom was in a separate room just to the left of the top of the stairs. I had the private room and my sister's room was on the landing. When someone walked up the stairs, it was very distinct, you could hear each individual step and the creaks got louder as the person approaching got closer. So one night, 
I am sitting on my bed watching TV or something, and I hear my sister come up the steps and go lay on her bed, so I start talking to her. When she doesn't answer me, I get annoyed and go into her room to figure out what her problem is, only she is not in there. My mind was blown because I know I heard her. I call for her and she had been downstairs the entire time. We never felt threatened, but it did seem that this entity liked picking only on women. Even my mother, who absolutely doesn't believe in ghosts, had to admit some odd things had happened. I think the funniest thing was having my ponytail pulled while I was doing the dishes. I don't know why it was so funny, it just cracked me up that whatever it was felt like playing with my hair. I still don't believe in ghosts, but this got me very close to believing. There was a house next door to us which had three separate renters, all of whom didn't know and never met each other. My mother, however, knew them all, she worked with one of them, and they all told her very similar stories which went something like this. They never felt like they were alone in the house, just like when you are in a house with someone else, and you know they are in the other room, even though you can't see or hear them. Well, these renters would be in the kitchen and they would feel something against their leg, like light pressure or something pulling down on their pants or dress. One yelled at this thing, she said she always thought it was a small child because of where it was grabbing her on the leg height wise, and another tenant said that while she was falling asleep in her chair, in a half dreaming, half awake state, she felt pressure on her leg like something climbed onto her lap, she dreamed that part. She then felt something coming up onto her chest, she was half asleep for that part, then it felt like it was trying to get into her mouth, she was fully awake for that part. They all moved out. A weird story that made me quickly question what was real and what wasn't. When I was around 8 years old and my brother was 6, we had been playing video games in my room while my dad and mom watched football downstairs. We had lots of fun until I had a really bad chill down my spine. I shrugged it off, but I noticed my brother got a chill, as well. He continued playing the game so I thought if he wasn't worried, then I shouldn't be. Everything went smoothly but not for long. My brother paused the game, do you hear that? He asked. I then heard a humming sound from what seemed to be a little girl. I nodded. I asked him, the humming right? He nodded as well. The humming was coming from the hallway right outside our room. We began to get nervous because we were the only children in the house. The door was shut, so we did not see anything. After a few seconds, the humming stopped, and we heard footsteps from the attic but nobody ever really goes up there. At the time, neither my brother or I had been ever up there, and my parents only went up there once. Once the footsteps stopped and nothing else was happening, we opened the door to see only the hallway. The next day, we told our parents what had happened, and they did the whole parent thing saying, oh, you probably just heard us, it was your imagination. Needless to say, if I didn't believe in ghosts before that incident, now I did. I don't know if it was an actual ghost or if I was just tired. I was alone at the flat and was pulling an all-nighter before a big event the following day. I decided to lie down on my bed to relax a bit and took the fetal position. The lights were on, my laptop was on, and the temperature was normal. Suddenly, I hear a voice saying, my name is Alice. I've always wondered what it would be like to attempt a conversation with a ghost and decided now was the time to do it, so I reply, hi Alice. My body then proceeds to go into shock, like an electric bolt is raging around my body. I had no control over it. Every cell in my body was vibrating. I kept repeating a prayer until the shaking stopped and then stood up and continued the work I was doing. Not sure if I'm a believer but what I felt and experienced gave me a lot of comfort back then. Grandpa was more silent than your typical quiet Finnish man is. His reactions to things comprised mostly of scoffs and grunts, and very rarely did he let out a shy smile. It was over 11 years ago that he passed away from throat cancer. It was bad, but he managed to survive it for a few years. The doctor had called my grandmother, saying that Gramps didn't have a lot of time left and as such, the family went to the hospital to visit him one last time. Dad said I should stay in the car, so I stayed. Gramps passed the following night. His funeral came and went and life moved on, but I was sick with grief, blaming myself for not going and seeing grandpa one last time. Exactly two years after Gramps had died, on the same day, I had a dream. In the dream, it was Christmas. My parents and I were going to my grandparents' house. 
Without even knocking on the door, my grandparents' dog, who had passed on a few years before Gramps, jumped up to me and started licking my face. Happy that I got to see her again, I walked inside, took off my winter jacket and boots. Other family members that were there as guests came to say hi to us, and behind all of them, I saw my grandpa. He rubbed his beard a bit, gave a sly smile, and gestured for a hug. I ran up to him and gave him the biggest hug a child my size could have given. He smelled and felt just like he used to, with his familiar Old Spice cologne mixed with a cigarette. He rubbed my head and told me to go wash my hands, so we could play some cards before the meal. My great-grandmother, Gramps' mother-in-law, who was still alive, gave some crude remarks from the kitchen that Gramps was teaching me bad habits. I squeezed Gramps one last time before I went to wash my hands. Gramps sat on the couch and broke out his favorite deck of cards, the shiny cards that were a bit too slippery for my small hands. Before he began dealing, Gramps held out his hand, and showed me his thumb. It was our small ritual for luck, and we did it whenever I had a school disco or an exam coming up. I pushed my thumb up to his and gave it a bit of extra push. Gramps began dealing cards, but before he finished, I woke up in my bed. Tears instantly started pouring out. I wanted to finish that card game with him but never got the chance. I've had a few, but the one that truly got me believing in them was a few years ago. I was looking after my aunt and uncle's dog for the week. They went on holiday and I stayed at their house all by myself. Everything was fine for the first two days, but on the third is when things went from zero to 100 in a matter of hours. It started up with a constant feeling of being watched, didn't pay much attention thought it was just me being silly. But once it got to around 10 to 11 PM, I started noticing doors opening and closing by themselves, again I ignored it and thought it must be the wind. Now comes the part really shook me up, it was about 2 AM. I was in bed trying to go to sleep, but again, it felt like I was being watched and it was keeping me up. The dog was under the bed making noises, growling and whining, and I started hearing footsteps in the hallway at first, but then I started to see what looked like a shadow walking past. The hallway light was on and I could see the shadow going past from the gap under the door. I decided to man up and look as I thought the real possibility that the house is being robbed. I went from room to room checking everything. Nothing. That was until I went past the front room and in the corner of my eye, I saw a dark figure standing in the corner. I instantly stopped in my tracks and turned and looked at it and said, who the hell are you and what are you doing in my house? I took one step forward, but then the door slammed in my face. I tried to open the door, but it was like something on the other side was holding it, so I couldn't. After a few seconds, it gave way and I opened the door and turned the light on. Nothing was there. Next I hear footsteps in the attic. The dog at this point was waiting by the front door as if it wanted to get the hell out. Couldn't blame him, but I'm not like that, I stand my ground no matter what. I didn't sleep at all that night, so I started watching TV till the sun rose. About 7 AM, I went to the kitchen and all the cupboard doors were open, and all the pots and pans were scattered across the floor. I was starting to get scared, but remember what my grandma once said, never show fear to anything supernatural. I cleaned up and then took the dog for a walk and just tried to forget about everything. That night, it started to happen again, but at the top of my voice I said, you are not welcome in this house, I demand that you leave this house now. Once I had said that, I heard a massive bang on the wall and then nothing, everything was fine after that. My aunt and uncle say they've never ever experienced what I had, but I know it was real and now I know that if it ever happens again, stand strong and show no fear. Okay, so let me start off with the fact that I am a major skeptic of literally everything. I rely on evidence and occasionally will accept reports of encounters with credible people as possible, but not factual. Might be cliche so far considering this is the internet and people lie all the time, but I'm hoping someone hears me out. When I was a kid, I used to see a tall woman wearing white, with black hair, enter my little sister's room, followed by a small baby crawling behind her at night time. My sister and I had all sorts of experiences with being suddenly grabbed. I think we all know the difference between a muscle twitch and an actual grab. She never saw the woman, but she did hear a woman constantly tell her they need me. It was terrifying and I've always been plagued with horrifyingly vivid, violent, and graphic nightmares and night terrors, even to this day. But as an adult, 
I question the legitimacy of what we experienced as a kid, because well, we have no proof. Fast forward to present day, I'm 30, and she's 26, she has a baby now. When I was on the phone with her not long ago, she stepped away to get her kid who was crying and I heard a hissing whisper say, stay with me, which gave me the heebie-jeebies, but I joked about hearing a ghost as soon as she left and she froze. She asked me what it said, and I told her, to which she replied with, dude, there's a ghost in here and my husband doesn't believe me, but I hear it all the time. So of course I'm like, that's creepy as heck but okay. A couple weeks go by and she recently messaged me saying her son was acting weird the moment she heard something again, and he looked directly into a corner of the room and whined. He's two years old, so it's that baby whine they do when they don't like something. Today she sent me videos from her camera monitor thing. Her son was sleeping and woke up saying stop it over and over, and then later on was repeating go away go away go away, and wiggling around uncomfortably. And I cannot help but be completely and utterly creeped out by this, because my sister isn't someone who makes shit up for funsies or fakes videos. I asked her if I could share it here, and she said no, which I understand. And I know there will be naysayers, I get that too. But I'm starting to question it more and more. I'm not really looking for any solutions or advice, but if you do have any I'm down to listen, or any input at all. She thinks this ghost has followed her around since childhood, and I honestly am 99% in total belief that it's legitimate at this point. Just wanted to get this out of the way right off the bat. I don't believe in ghosts, or souls, or poltergeists, any of that afterlife hoo-ha. I'm agnostic and a huge slut for empirical science. Not saying that to condescend anyone who does believe in those things, you do you, just wanted to make it clear that I'm one of the biggest skeptics you can meet. Nonetheless, I do believe that weird stuff happens to people that appears otherwise inexplicable, and I've encountered several instances that many would call paranormal or ghostly encounters. One such occurrence permanently left a mark in my mind that still affects my mannerisms to this day despite it happening 15 years ago, and that's the story I'm going to tell. This is 100% true, couldn't make this thing up if I tried. I was 6 years old, and even back then, I would have told you that I didn't believe in ghosts. But that was more out of a foolhardy attempt to sound mature and tough than a subscription to a particular set of scientific principles. In reality, ghosts, or the idea of ghosts, was the scariest thing besides death itself that I could conceptualize. Popular horror anthologies like scary stories to tell in the dark and goosebumps spread around my grade school like a rash in those days, so I could never get away from my fellow first graders conjectures about the dangerous world of evil spirits. Somewhere along the way, probably after hearing a specific rendition of Bloody Mary involving a staircase, I became extremely afraid of the stairwell leading up to the platform that cut about six feet worth of space between my room and my parents' room. At that age, my little scared butt would haul it over those six feet at the speed of light every night, so that I could sleep with my mom. I could never bring myself to look down that staircase in the dark, but it was impossible to avoid crossing paths with it. The bathroom was also on that same landing, perpendicular to my room, so I would have to encounter it to pee too. At some point, I must have gotten tired of being scared over a set of stairs on the regular, so I resolved one night to haul up my onesies and face my fears head on. I operated under the pretense, of course, that my fear of the staircase was based on nothing and there was nothing about a dark set of steps to be afraid of. There's no such thing as ghosts. On this fateful night, I leveled with myself to not run across the landing. I told myself I would just walk across it, like a normal person, and nothing would get me. No Bloody Mary, no Candy Man, nothing was coming up those stairs. I was so emboldened by this aphorism, that I even decided that I would stop dead in my tracks and just drink in the darkness. So I stood there, in the middle of the landing, halfway in between the two bedrooms, to prove to myself that there's no need to hide when it's dark outside. For a couple seconds, everything was great, just dandy. I heard nothing and saw no one, I drank in my triumph and courage. And then, sure as heck, a man laughs. Like listen, I don't know how to describe this to anyone whenever I tell this story. All I can tell you is, I was standing there on the landing at the top of the stairs, it was almost pitch black, my parents were fast asleep behind a closed door, and all the televisions in the house were off. It wasn't a distant or muffled laugh. It wasn't a I think I heard it, but it was kind of whispery thing. Crystal clear as day, loud as hell, 
sounding like it was both in my ear and coming from down the stairs at the same time. I think I was scared and I couldn't even really process where it was coming from. Specifically, it was a deep voice, and it sounded as nefarious as a maniacal laugh can be. Like whoever it was waited for the moment I felt proud of myself for withstanding the darkness before cackling like a supervillain just to beat me up. I jetted across the landing to my parents' room, dove under their covers, and didn't speak of it until I entered my late teens. To give you an idea of how real this was to me, I to this very day, cannot stand on that landing in the dark. If I'm staying at my parents' house and have to pee in the middle of the night, I run or leap over the landing just like I did as a little kid. I'm a 22-year-old grown adult. I know rationally, that I must have imagined it or dreamt it or something. I'm almost certain that my imagination was so fixated on the possibility of encountering something, that it generated an auditory hallucination. This notion brings me little comfort however, because it just makes me afraid of what my own imagination is capable of. Even with the clarity of hindsight, I can't chalk it up to a dream. I was wide awake, and I'll probably die with this totally ridiculous notion that if I dare to stand on that landing in the dark, I'll hear that man's laughter again. In some way, I'll never be completely comfortable at night in the house I grew up in. I've never believed in ghosts, but one of my best friends is deeply into the spiritual and supernatural. We've always agreed and has made for many years of interesting discussions. She lives in a house that has been in her family for generations, and she claims it is haunted, but I've kept a respectful skepticism. She recently described some of the paranormal events she's encountered. Most of them scary or involving inexplicable perceptions happening, including all five senses such as inexplicable temperature fluctuations, sights that have blinked in and out of visions, indescribable mystery odors, and sounds. Even getting a tap on the shoulder when alone in a room. I assume all these have natural causes, and while multiple other friends claim to have been eyewitnesses, or ear or nose or skin witnesses, I'd never personally seen anything inexplicable there myself, until today. And was it ever a weird one I'm almost embarrassed to share. A few of us were sitting in the den relaxing and chatting. Our host had recently gotten a pair of kittens who like to play funny games with each other and with us humans. I had my bare feet resting just over the edge of an ottoman in sight of all and couldn't see any kittens from where I sat when suddenly I sensed a very real feeling that I assumed was one of the kittens investigating my feet, as if its whiskers were brushing under my toes. I am extremely ticklish and kicked and yelped drawing the room's attention. I giggled and said one of the kittens was playing with my feet. My friend pointed to the other corner of the room where the kittens were actually curled up napping. I was mystified. I kept sitting in my chair and we kept chatting. But over the next few minutes, I continued to notice an unexplainable sensation that soft whiskers or feathers were brushing gently under and between my toes and the tops and bottoms of my feet. The sensation was more vivid than any hallucination. I was definitely having my feet tickled, and there was definitely nobody there to do it. I was starting to get weirded out and a little scared. I tried to resist, but couldn't stop twitching, kicking and snorting until what now felt like fingers were scribbling all over the most ticklish parts of my feet, and I had to pull back and stand up. There was nothing there. It was so strange and silly a thing to have going on that I was embarrassed to explain to my friends why I was acting so weird. I crossed my legs in my chair to cover up my feet, thinking that might do something, and the feeling stopped for a while. But in a few minutes, even with my feet tucked under my knees, I started to feel it again. Little pokes and scratches on my toes that made me jump, then more continuous and random scribbles on my feet that tickled more than anything I'd felt since I was a kid. I kept shifting in my seat, squirming, and trying to stop myself from bursting out into squealing laughter. Every few seconds, the tickling would stop, and I could breathe once or twice before I finally felt these invisible hands start to really tickle my feet all over, fast, random intensity. As scared as I was starting to get, the ticklishness was so much I screamed, jumped up, and laughed so hard and so loud, I sounded like a crazy person and kicked my feet on the ottoman. By this point, my friends were all laughing at me like I was some kind of freak. This went on for several seconds and I can barely breathe as I force myself out of the chair and try to stand up, still catching my breath, still feeling little tickles, but rubbing my feet hard against the carpet. I explained to my friends that something messed up was going on. My feet were being tickled even though none of us could see anything there. I'd heard of feeling itchy, or pins and needles, 
But this was not that. As a very ticklish person who has a love or hate relationship with being tickled. I can tell you that this was straight up tickle torture by an invisible pair of hands as far as my eyes and my poor ticklish feet could tell. The other two friends looked at me like I was crazy, and I started to think I'd gone insane myself, but our host, the ghost believer, smirked at me and asked rhetorically an invisible pair of hands could just happen to know my most ticklish spot, and go all out like that, and in a haunted house? No way, but this just happened to me for real. All my life, haunted places people took me to just look normal and nothing ghostly happened. How could this be? I asked her if she'd ever seen a ghost just tickle someone and what ghosts she thinks live in her house. She thought for a moment, then she looked down, and looked both sad and happy. She said she'd never seen any of the ghosts tickle anyone, but she wondered about one late cousin as a possible ghost. 20 years ago, her cousin Jackie had tragically died in that house at the age of 10 from falling down the steps and hitting her head. It scarred the family for years, and the house was thought to be haunted before the accident. Little Jackie had died just a few feet from where I was sitting and her favorite chair used to be where mine was then. She could be a little too insistent on always getting that seat, but she got it by being her playful self as always. Whenever Jackie wanted to take the recliner from me, she would just come up and sit on my ankles and tickle my feet until I gave it up. She must have tickled me out of that old chair a hundred times. I hated being tickled by her back then, but missed it so much every time I sat in it after she died. But this was the first time I've ever seen this happen. Maybe you should switch chairs? Our host's story about her cousin was sad and heartwarming at the same time. My story was so weird, so silly, and so embarrassing I couldn't believe I'd told it. My friends kept snickering at me and teasing me as I moved to another chair. Just as I settled in, once again I began to feel a slight caress across my toes, and as soon as I felt like a little finger brush in between my toes, I jumped and squealed again. I continued to try to resist the tickles for the rest of the evening, only letting out a little giggle or snort here or there. I teffed it out. Tickling is super intense for me, but I like to laugh, so it could be worse. It got less intense over the night, and when I got home I asked my boyfriend to tickle my feet to see what would happen. It tickled, but I had to tell him a ghost did it better. After a few days, the tickly feeling was gone. I am an Italian 24 male, and am skeptical or don't believe in ghosts despite a series of unexplainable events, most during night shift, which terrorized my colleagues while I tried my best to investigate them to no avail. This is a recount of the phenomena I encountered while working at this old abandon, everyone there died to the plague in 1300, medieval village turned hotel. It started with a Russian woman on holy day with her husband, as I was leading her to the room she stopped in front of the door asking me if something bad happened there cause she felt a bad energy, imagine this said with a strong accent. I brushed it off and when going back to the front desk cracked a joke to my colleagues, they told me the old owner hanged himself in that room. The private church bell rang three times by itself, it's a small medieval church with nothing electric and I held the key to the only door. My other female co-workers didn't want to go investigate, but I didn't want a guest breaking into the place or something, so I went to check. The door was still locked, as was the door to the bell. As I opened it, the rope was swinging as if it was pulled up until that moment. Night shift co-worker never going to the kitchens to eat ever again after he came running back upstairs where I was not telling me what happened. As I was having a meal multiple weird events over following nights happened, including table blankets slowly flapping around as if moved by wind, despite no windows or ACs and other tables being perfectly still. Chairs moving upstairs and doing a lot of noise, when I confronted my supervisor about it, he said he never moved from what also was the only chair in the back office. Me having an overwhelming feeling of something looking at me while eating, I start looking around the room just to find a door curtain immediately swing closed, I rushed to open it and found nothing outside. Odd thing is it was atop a big flight of stairs, so nothing could possibly get away that quickly. I asked my coworker if he was pranking me and said he never moved from the office. I heard my name distinctly called from upstairs, I was annoyed at the interruption and when going upstairs, the other guy said he never called me nor heard any voices. One night, I was passing by the old village well, I don't know why but I had the urge to look down into it, as I did I noticed something swimming away in a flash and submerging, can rats fall in wells? So I've never believed in ghosts or spirits. I'm a believer that once you die, that's it. 
This happened for around three or so nights. Anyway, I was at my girlfriend's house one night and I was painting on a canvas around midnight in her room. I finish for the night and go to rinse my brushes off in the bathroom. I'm cleaning and I head footsteps behind me in the hallway, she is in bed. So I go back to the room, and ask if she had gotten up. She hadn't, it's probably nothing and I go to bed. Second night at her house. We're up late around 1.30 am listening to music, and she's already asleep in the bed. I'm sitting up watching the office on the chair and feel my leg get grabbed hard. And then I see shuffling on a different bed that's unoccupied in the house. It is strange and I was a tad spooked. Third night at her house. She's asleep we're in bed and I hear the bathroom door open. I think it's the wind and then I hear it slam loud as heck. I go to sleep and haven't had an experience since. I grew up loving ghost hunting shows, horror movies, stuff about aliens, all of it. As I became a teenager, I became more skeptical and scientific minded about it. I still love those shows, but I began thinking none of it was real. I was 18 and figured if I'd never seen anything supernatural by now, I never would. Out of high school, I started working at a local concert venue with a checkered history. Opening in the 1920s as a movie theater, it also catered to vaudeville shows and served as a speakeasy at one point. Eventually in the 1960s or 70s, they cleared the projectors out and used the stage behind the silver screen to put on concerts. The place was massive, yet claustrophobic. A row of ten doors led onto a huge foyer. Darkly painted fixtures and carvings encroached. On the left, a grand staircase split off parallel to the foyer, arching over the office and kitchen. On the right, two huge doorways led into the concert hall. Once inside the main hall, those doorways flanked a bar area which always smelled of bitters and mildewed, spilled beer. Three levels of dance floor advanced downward to the stage. On the right was a door leading up a ramp to the backstage area and the dressing rooms. The soundboard and dressing rooms were all stage left, as was the load-in door where roadies and lesser-known bands would load their gear in. Looking out from the stage, more carvings and fixtures pressed in on the room. There were catwalks, and organ lofts full of old stage rigging. The backstage dressing rooms were up a set of metal stairs bolted to the side of the thick cement walls. There was a balcony that seated 250 overlooking the dance floors and stage. Above all, there was a huge chandelier. The manager used to walk around telling us all the known ghost stories. She would point to a wall, we'd follow the wall around the corner, and another corner until we realized that this section of wall must contain a 10-foot deep hollow spot. What was in there? Liquor from the speakeasy days? Cash? The bodies of rival mobsters? These hollow walls were everywhere in the venue. There were supposedly underground walkways that lead from the old speakeasy to the old brothel, and to city hall. And what about the ghosts? What about the little girl people would see on the stairs? What about the blood stain near the exit, the one that always came back no matter how hard you scrubbed? What about the strange reflections in the dark mirror at the top of the stairs? My friend, let's call him John, got me a job there setting up for shows in the day and bouncing at night. It was a great job just out of high school. We'd see bands we liked, then party all night once the shows let out. We'd hate on bands like Foreigner, whose rider list was a mile long and demanded exotic fruit that wasn't available in our area. We'd hang out with Dave Mustaine as he told his crew to walk behind me roadie. We'd marvel at classics like Zap and Roger and Earth, Wind and Fire. And we'd rock out to King Diamond, Machine Head, and Danzig. But before the shows, it was just me and John, prepping the venue, loading in kegs and booze, filling ice trays, stocking the backstage rooms and bathrooms, boring stuff. We'd load a bin full of ice and beer and food, walk it from the kitchen under the stairs, through the large doors past the bar, down the three dance floors, up the stage door ramp, and up the three flights of stairs to the dressing rooms. During setup, the whole place was on lockdown. Chains and padlocks were wrapped around all the handles on the double doors. The stage doors were chained and padlocked. The only way in or out of the whole place was under the stairs and out the office, all the way at the front of the building. On one of the tedious trips hauling beer up to the dressing rooms, John and I were near the dance floor closest to the stage. We both looked up at the same time. Not ten feet in front of us was a man with his back to us. He wore a cape and wide-brimmed hat with, of all things, a feather perched up in it. He dashed up through the stage door. 
John and I looked at each other, knowing no one else could be in the building, and certainly no one dressed the way this man was. Did you see, we both blurted out at the same time. Guy looked like he was in Phantom of the Opera. John said. I nodded and we both ran after him. After all, our other job was security. We ran up the ramp behind the stage door. The exit was chained and padlocked, so he could only have run backstage. We ran through the door and looked around. The stairwell was empty, the stage was empty, the backstage door padlocked. Nowhere for him to go, nothing there. Where the hell could he have gone? We did our due diligence and checked that he hadn't jumped off the stage and run out through the office. We checked the dressing rooms. There was only a tiny window three flights up. I suppose he could have shimmied down the tree next to the window, but there was no way a large man in full costume was crawling through that tiny window. We were trying to convince ourselves that this was a full-grown man that had somehow escaped us. Looking at that tiny window and realizing there was no way for him to get out, John and I both knew he hadn't gotten out of the building. He had just disappeared. We stopped trying to convince ourselves that the man in the costume was really a man at all. We didn't know what he was, but the word we settled on was ghost. I saw what I later in life concluded was Bargast, a very unnatural looking ghostly black dog, when I was nine. I encountered it twice in two different locations and had no idea what it was, I just knew it terrified me so bad. Both times I saw it during the middle of the day when I was up and about, so I defiantly wasn't dreaming. The dog itself was a clear solid creature. I'm not religious, but I can't think of a better word to describe it than demonic. Both times it also appeared, jumped up at the window and then was gone too fast to have ran away like a regular dog. Both times it also appeared in an enclosed location. When I was older, I began researching it and discovered that it is a common sighting around the area of England I used to live. This confirmed to my skeptic side that at the very least we can't have all been crazy, lying, or hallucinating etc. I cannot explain it in rational terms, because how can I? I guess whatever the real reason we just don't know yet. Science can supposedly explain everything, but if it doesn't yet have a scientific explanation then it falls under supernatural or something. Who knows maybe in the future we might have a better understanding of how these so-called supernatural events occur. I am also aware that to other skeptics it's hard to take seriously. I too would not believe such a thing if it didn't happen to me. I wasn't quite a believer on the paranormal like most people out there, until of course I've experienced it myself. I was just a kid, probably 11 to 13 years old, who just got my first smartphone. A few weeks later, I was sleeping in my room and just woken up when I suddenly got the urge to take a selfie. I don't know what I was thinking back then and why I did it, but after I took the picture, I didn't bother to go check it. A few days passed and my uncle came for a visit, he borrowed my phone and was checking it out when he called me and asked who was the little person with me in the picture. He zoomed it in and there was, in fact, a tiny pale face at the bottom right corner of the picture. The whole shot was practically my ugly tired face, and there was this little face, smiling into the camera. Her, I assumed it was female because of feminine features, complexion was so pale and she had blood red lips and flawless white teeth. It looked like she was resting over my shoulder but the camera only caught her head in the pic. Her eyes were closed, probably because strands of my hair fell on her head. I was just a kid so that frightened me so bad, I cried for hours and was scared at F of going back to my room. This broke out in the morning and the neighbors were coming in the house trying to ask me about what happened and wanted to see the photo. I ended up passing it to them and they ended up passing it to other people and even ended up in the internet where my father, who was living far from us due to work, got surprised seeing me in the pic after a co-worker showed him the photo. A day after that, I woke up in the morning with my phone screen having these green and red lines. The screen was broken and I don't know how that happened in the middle of the night. It must have gotten angry because I shared the photo. Looking back now, I don't know if that photo is somewhere still in the net, because it ended up disappearing from other people's phones and I haven't got any news about it since. I, for sure, know how I that entity ended up following me but that's for another time since this post is already so long. Tripping on acid. I sat on my couch and that tingle of being watched hit me, so I looked around. Nothing. I looked back at the door and there in this way two corporeal little kid in a blue jacket standing at the front door. 
I wanted to ask him questions about how he died, but my fear got the best of me. So I simply asked him to leave after a moment which he promptly did. I never could find the death records for the particular apartment I was in and it could have been 100% hallucinatory, but I've never been able to shake off the feeling of absolute reality of meeting this kid. My sister and I were getting ready to go out one day. I was doing my makeup in front of a large mirror, and in my periphery, I saw her come into the room and stand in the background, watching me get ready. After about 30 seconds, I asked her, are you ready? But she didn't reply. I was still looking at myself, but I could see that she hadn't moved. I repeated the question and still, no response. Finally, I asked, what are you doing? Why won't you answer me? And turned to face her. As I looked toward her in the mirror, I saw an unfamiliar woman standing there who looked nothing like my sister. By the time I finished turning around, she was gone and the room was empty. There's no way I imagined it. I had seen her walk in, she stayed there for about two minutes, and I saw her very clearly as I turned. The fact that I actually talked to her says it all. A few months later, my great-grandma and great-aunt, who lived there, both separately described the same woman watching them in other parts of the house. I only told my mom, not them, so she was as shocked as I was when they talked about it. None of us had ever believed in the paranormal and none of us ever told ghost stories. I used to live in Finland for one and a half years, and had chance to rent an old house, two stories with huge rooms in middle of little parish. Many have said that house is called Moomin's house, because it was purple with little tower. At first, everything was normal. Have been living there for two weeks when neighbor came around to speak. And at some point, he in the middle of convo pointed out to me that every family or single persons who have been living there moved out in one week, because very weird things were going on there like lights going out at random times. Noises and scratches, and some rooms went very cold all of a sudden, also screams were heard. My first thought that's okay, haven't heard anything yet. But skip to one week later when I went to kitchen to make food, and all of a sudden, I hear very heavy steps at the second floor. First I thought that maybe something fell, then I went to the second floor and saw nobody, but felt bit colder than they're used to. Then I went back downstairs, left the light on when I went to second floor, the light were off. I was like wow, what the hell? I left lights on thinking to myself, then I asked if there's anybody here? I heard steps again from kitchen, but wasn't brave enough to go back there. I was shaken up what I just witnessed, because I never believed in such things. Skip hour later when I'm in middle of CS go round. All of a sudden, my PC shuts off without any errors or warnings or electricity problems. Then I had feeling that somebody was watching me. I slowly turned around, but there was nobody. I started crying because I was legit scared that it's gonna harm me. Skip to next morning, everything was normal until midnight. When I woke up to very violent scratching, steps, and growling. After that, I started to cry again until I fell asleep. Next day, I went to my boss and asked if he knew anything about this house. Oh boy, he had story to tell me. First thing he said that it was a mini hospital in World War II where soldiers died and later on it worked as hospice and finally was a kindergarten where a little boy was suffocated to death. He asked me if I saw somebody like he knew all along. I told everything I've heard, then he tells me to move out and never look back. When I was around 9 to 10, I was camping with a friend's family. And one night while I was sleeping, someone I didn't know unzipped the tent, looked me dead in the eye, and asked, do you have a hammock tarp? Besides the fact that I have no idea what the hell that is this dude was absolutely ginormous, like Shaquille O'Neal but fatter. Later while, me and my friend were peeing, yes we peed together, he brought up that his dead uncle who died in a car crash with his friend's aunt, used to fish around here. And upon seeing a photo of him, it was the exact dude who came into the tent. I always wanted to believe but never had any experience of my own to allow me to. Until one day, I was home alone, and as plain as day heard someone stomp up my basement steps to the floor I was on. I was sitting maybe 12 feet away from the steps, and I was frozen as soon as I heard them. I was watching closely and the sound got all the way to the top of the steps, but no one was there. My cat was sleeping on the couch adjacent to me, he woke up suddenly and stared right at the stairs too. He heard it too. So that's how I know I wasn't crazy. That was wild to experience. 
I wouldn't say I didn't believe, but I wasn't a full believer, I was middle ground. Then a few years ago, I moved into my now house, I'm in my mid 40s, so I've essentially gone my entire life with zero paranormal experiences. It started out as a weird, ha, huh, I think ghosts live here? But I never felt they were harmful they were just there. I couldn't even give a specific example, but I just knew I wasn't alone. Then my dog started acting weird. At night, he'd start looking at the ceiling like there was something there, happened a few times a week. Then I'd be in bed and I'd feel something walk across the bed. Thinking it was the dog, but nothing was there. This happened all the time. Doors would close strangely, lights would flicker but the constant was the footsteps across the bed. For the first year or so, I never said anything to my husband, I for sure thought he'd think I was crazy. Then one night, he bolts up in bed and was like, did you feel that? It was the footsteps. We both realized we'd been experiencing the same thing and both thought we were crazy. The clincher for me though was when my dog woke me one night to go for a pee. I let him out and was watching him through the peephole in the door. I very clearly saw a man and a woman dressed in Victorian era clothing standing together looking at something in my hedges. It was like 2 AM. I took a step back and was like whoa, obviously half asleep and did I just see that? Then went back to look again, and sure enough, they were still there. I've never seen them again since, but I know for sure they were there. I know without a doubt there is some sort of spirit in this house, but I also feel like it's friendly, so not worried about it. Now when something weird happens, my husband and I are like, oh, the ghosts are active tonight. I had a few experiences as a child, but nothing I couldn't explain away as something else. One day though when I was living on my own, I had a sudden urge to take my dog for a walk, it was midnight. Not the best idea seen as I am a short girl, but whatever, I decided to do it, I wasn't going to go far. As I'm walking back, I have to cross a dirt bridge about a minute or two walk away from where I lived, and I saw someone standing in the middle of this bridge. He was illuminated by a streetlight behind him, but just an absolute solid black silhouette. But I knew it was a man, he was extremely tall, wearing a long trench coat and long brimmed hat, like those mysterious figures standing in the backgrounds in movies. When I saw him, I knew I should stop. Now I have a bad anxiety issue, like I can't even walk near wall-mounted TVs, because I'm scared they'll fall on me. So being out that late at night itself was weird, but what was weirder was I wasn't scared. I was so calm and I knew this was something I should be scared of, but I couldn't even force myself to be wary. He wasn't there to hurt me, but I couldn't look away. Eventually, the need to stand still passed and I started walking again and he disappeared but again weird but my brain just went yeah that's fine. I'm coming around the corner and some neighbors are standing there like, oh my god, did you see the shooting? I'm like what and spot the road name and yield sign lying in the road and three cars smashed together. That bridge was at most one minute away and I could see my house from that bridge. So I was like, when did this happen? Oh just like a minute ago, they were freaking out. I stood on that bridge while this was happening. Even on the farthest part of this walk, I was close enough to hear gunshots and hadn't brought or used any headphones. But when I was on that bridge, in full view of my house as it literally happened outside my house, and I mean it would have been my car in that three car smash except I was lazy earlier and decided instead of parallel parking to just park on the other side of the street, I saw and heard nothing. I did not hear or see the car take down the street sign. I did not hear or see the car smash into the other one so hard it took three tow trucks to pull them apart where there is still parts in the road over a year later. I did not hear the three, confirmed by police, fired shots. I did not see or hear the gunman shouting afterwards that six different neighbors heard. No one was hurt and the guys were never found, but I still don't understand how I missed this happen when I was on this bridge, because I know when I was coming up to that bridge, I was telling my dog, look we're almost home, pointed out house and everything was normal. Something happened that night that probably saved my life and I'm not one to look a gift horse in the mouth, so I'm not questioning it. When I was about 13, my mom, sisters, and I went to go visit our great grandma and grandma. It was right after Christmas, and we were going to stay for the weekend and then head back home. Well the day came for us to leave and mom said that we had to stay one more night. Well, me being a bratty 13 year old that just wants to get home to some Wi-Fi, I threw a big fit and ran up to the room my sisters and I were sharing. 
I get into the room and no one was there, so I closed the door, threw myself under the covers, popped my headphones in and blasted my music. I don't remember how much time passed now, but it wasn't long, if I were to guess maybe 15 to 20 minutes. I all of a sudden feel someone jump on the bed right next to me. Now I'm still pissed and I thought one of my sisters came into the room to bother me, so I ripped the covers off me to yell at them and no one is there. I scrambled off the bed, took a quick look around to make sure it wasn't my sisters and fucking bolted. I didn't even tell any of them until we got back home, because I was too afraid to speak about it. A couple years ago, me and a few of my friends went camping back by a river. About 100 yards behind us is old abandoned house and 150 yards next to it used to be a house, but burned down and killed the homeowner years ago. All of us were sitting by the campfire and my jeep is 15 feet to the left of me, and randomly, I see something move behind it so I look over and this 7 foot tall 4 feet wide pure white cloud floats from the ground and disappears into the tree we're under. Me thinking my eyes are playing tricks on me I look back at my friends and one friend directly on the other side of the fire is looking at the place where I saw the cloud and says, well that's messed up. I said you saw that too? And he explained exactly what I just saw. Gave me chills. 10 minutes go by and we hear a bunch of loud banging coming from the old house then it goes silent. Then a few friends say they see lights coming from the woods, so all of us leave everything and drive back home. As I was passing the house, I look over and see a pure white ball sitting next to the house. I've never seen or experienced anything like that and would like to know what it was. Two experiences at my current workplace. Old building, renovated into something new. Had a few previous staff mention they've seen a woman in white at the top of the stairs or walking through the kitchen. I'm like yeah, whatever. Until the day everyone was in bed, one staff upstairs, one at the table with me, and I turned around and very briefly saw a face in the dark conservatory. My heart could have leapt out of my chest. I made someone check with me just in case it was an intruder. Nothing, doors locked, no one's there. 100% first thought was not oh my god, ghost. It was oh my god, intruder. We have meds and vulnerable people. So when I say we checked, we checked. I was also walking out of the kitchen another time and I felt someone tap my shoulder. When I turned, there's literally no one behind me, or even in the room. Nothing else has really happened since, though some PM or night staff did report a few strange sightings, but not for a while. I'm not like early day Ryan Bergara carrying holy water in a water pistol and screaming at a torch believer, but it has made me believe it's possible, because I cannot explain these events. It's hard to describe, but the house had a very bad vibe however it was particularly bad in the hallway and office. People always report they feel like they are being watched, people who aren't generally scared of the dark will switch the light on to go down the hallway and generally get up and out as quickly as possible. It's super creepy and it catches so many people. The other weird thing that would happen is people who slept in the office, converted into a bedroom, would start sleeping walking with no prior history. They would always end up in the same part of the house as well, this is multiple people over the years. And then there was the doorbell. It would ring randomly between 1 AM to 3 AM, it would only happen once every couple of weeks, but it was consistent. We thought it was a malfunction, so after a year or so, we replaced the doorbell. Same thing kept happening. After a while longer, we did away with the doorbell altogether, but then we got knocking instead. This continued until I moved out. I never really considered the house to be haunted over the years that I lived there, I just knew it was weird and creepy. A couple years after I moved, I ran into the previous owner of the house by chance through work. I never told her that I lived in the house, but she ended up telling me she had sold her house after her husband hung himself in the garden. There was another event which I witnessed but can't explain at all and makes me sound like a crazy person, so I'll leave it at that. As strange as it is, I still don't believe in ghosts, but that house was haunted as hell. I have had various things happen to cause me to question how straightforward what we know of our world is, but I lived in what felt like a haunted house. It's a bit along. I lived for a while in a very old house. It was the oldest house in the area, and had started off as a small cottage, with various extensions and developments throughout its history, but even the newest sections were still at least 100 years old. It is a detached house. 
for some of the time I lived there alone, and had up to three other friends living there at other times. One time, I was sat in the living room, at this point, no one else lived with me, and I heard my bike fall over in room next door. I kept it inside, leaning on a wall near the back door. Initially, I thought nothing of it, thinking that the handlebars had turned and it slid over. When I came to find my bike, it was a couple of meters from the wall, and on its side as if it had been flung away from the wall. Months later, I spoke to the owner of the house about it and he had had the same thing happen to him with a motorcycle wheel from the same wall. I would often find lights and taps left on that I was sure I had switched off, they never turned themselves on when I could see them though, so I could never be sure it wasn't me. I would often hear noises in the house even when I was the only one there. I slept in a room at the top of the house, three stories, and I would get home from work before my housemates. Often I would be up in my room and clearly hear one of them come home and run up the stairs. I would shout downstairs to say hello, and get no reply. Then explore only to discover the doors still all locked and no one but me in the house. My friend woke up feeling himself pinned into his bed at night, he said it felt as if a person was holding him down by his arms. He has not experienced night terrors before or after living in this house. We looked after a Rottweiler dog for a while there, it was a fearless and to be honest dangerous dog, or at least fearless until it lived there. Sometimes, she would cower in a corner or press up against us for comfort while staring at something we couldn't see. Sometimes, her stare would be following this invisible thing moving through the room. There were all sorts of odd happenings in this house, a lot of them easily written off as nothing due to the fact there were four of us living there, but I am convinced that house is haunted, as is the landlord. I only spoke to him about this after having moved out, it's not like he planted the idea. Oddly though, it wasn't actually that scary. The noises of non-existent people didn't bother me, but the bike and the dog was pretty freaky. I worked for American Cruise Lines at the beginning of the year last year. When I got on board, things just could not go right. Crew couldn't get along, then bad and weird things started happening. One worker took a picture when we were tied up alongside another boat, sister's boat. There was one bedroom light on in the other boat. In that room was a person, but it almost looked like that person had a wolf's head. Then my physical experience came about, my shift was coming to an end. It was maybe 11.30 pm when I was doing my final walk around. There was a woman on the second floor totally naked, old lady probably 70s to 80s, playing with a door handle. I thought to myself there is no way this woman is this drunk. I turned around to find somebody to help her. I found my boss, we went back to help her. But she was gone, nowhere to be found. I feel like if she was that drunk and playing with a door knob in that manner, she wouldn't just walk right back to her bedroom suddenly becoming conscious. The boss and I went upstairs to the camera system to try and find where she had gone in case she had gotten lost. No proof of her, anywhere. Not on any of the cameras not anywhere to be found. So the next few days, I am trying to find this lady, maybe point out to everyone which guest it was. Never saw her again. My husband and I moved into an old house that had a lot of history. It was built by his great-great-grandfather and 14 children were born in the house with five of them dying during infancy or early childhood. Both great-great-grandparents died in the house, and their oldest son, my husband's great-grandfather, gave it to his daughter, my husband's grandmother, as a wedding gift. Well, she sold the house to the family we bought it from. The husband of that family died of a heart attack in the house and the son of that family fatally shot himself in the house a year later. My husband and I didn't believe at the paranormal at all when we moved in. Immediately, things started happening. We were hearing and feeling huge bangs and crashes, like heavy furniture falling over before we even moved the first bits of furniture in. Once we moved in, it continued and we would hear glass breaking and never found the source of it all. We would wake to voices at night that would stop as soon as a light was turned on. We came home on more than one occasion to all the lights on, and every door and window wide open and our dogs would absolutely refuse to go in our bedroom. We chalked it all up to coincidence until it reached a point to where neither of us could stand to be in the house alone because of the heaviness the house seemed to hold. It all came to a head when I found out I was pregnant with our first child. We were woken in the night to see the outline of a man in our bedroom doorway. And when we turned on the lamp, 
Every water faucet in the house came on followed by the bathroom mirror falling and shattering all over the bathroom. We sold the house because I wasn't comfortable raising a baby in a house that felt so heavy and angry, and haven't had any experiences of that magnitude in the nine years since we moved out. Around my freshman year of high school, my buddy and I were staying at another friend's house. My two friends were upstairs playing Xbox, the door closed. I was downstairs playing Fallout 3, had to have been after midnight at this point. In the span of 15 minutes, three things happen. First, in my peripheral, I see a partial shadow in the kitchen that moved into the stove light. There's no breeze in the house and nothing hanging nearby it. I brush it off. A few minutes later, I swear I hear my name whispered twice. The first time was somewhat soft followed immediately by a louder and sharper whisper of my name. The door to my friend's room never opened or closed, and it was too clear to be through the door. I could see the door from the downstairs couch, the house was kind of open like that. Shortly after the whispers, the dishes and the sink shift and I nope my way upstairs into my friend's room. I open the door and shut it and ask if they were fucking with me. One friend was passed out and the other was confused. The dishes shifting definitely feel like a coincidence, the partial shadow easily could have been my eyes playing tricks. It's the damn whispering of my name twice that I still can't convince myself it was my buddies. That's probably the part of me that wants to believe in the paranormal. 